it's an absolute honour and a privilege to say that I am joined by Mr Peter Hook here uh, Very kind. in your dressing room at Leeds Cockpit uh, before your show tonight. You're going to be playing Unknown Pleasures in full tonight. Is there anything else we, we should expect in your set? <laughs> No, I mean, what we do is we draw, uh, usually chronologically, actually, from the whole of Joy Division's catalogue. Mm. Uh, and what happened was, was that when, when we premiered it at the factory, which was on the 30th anniversary of Ian's death, um, we played the whole catalogue of Joy Division chronologically. But the trouble was, is that the early ones are dead punky. So by the time you get to Unknown Pleasures, your voice fucked. <laughs> So we had to change it a little bit, so we use a little bit of artistic licence. But generally it's a chronological run-through of Joy yeah. Division's music. So I dig these songs up again, and, and how does it feel playing them? There's obviously the emotional side of it, um, but there, there must be some great well, memories I mean, as well that come back. Yeah, I mean, it, it was funny really, because I, I, was, I was reading Facebook, and I shouldn't do it, yesterday, and um, some kid who was obviously a fan was saying, oh, looking forward to hearing uh, Peter up play tonight. Yeah. And some other kid came on and went, why? He's been playing the same old shit for 30 years. Uh, which isn't actually strictly true because we never played the Joy Division. Yeah. I mean, what happened was, was when New Order split up in 2006, I was out of a job, basically. Mm. Uh, and I was DJing, um, but I wasn't playing. And uh, I got asked to uh, start a club with my mate, which yeah. is the factory in Manchester. And on the opening night, he said, um, we should put a band on. We should have a band on, you know, to, to start the opening night, because it's factory, it's all about music, bands. So I said, oh, right, who, who, should, who should do it then? And he went, you. And I went, hey. So what he did was he sort of encouraged me to get some friends together, which is these lot, they were in yeah. Monaco and Freebase. And we put a band together and did like a run through of greatest hits. And it was really fucking good. I really, really enjoyed it. And then what happened after that was, was that about a, nearly a year later, we, um, it, it, it was the 30th anniversary of Ian Curtis's death. Yeah. Now, when we were in New Order, we never celebrated anything to do with Joy Division. Mm. But it felt okay. Yeah. It's okay that, because you had another job. You don't fucking go back to the post office when you've got no. a job at the uh, railways, do you? No. Do you know what I mean? So it was like that. So um, I was involved in a plan by Macclesfield City Council to celebrate Ian's life, yeah. which I thought was fantastic. And I thought, to be honest with you, it was 30 years overdue. And it all fell through. And I was really annoyed. And both me and Steve Morris were involved in it, actually. And, and when it all fell through, I thought, right, fuck it. I'll do some of myself. On his day, when he committed suicide, unfortunately, on May the 18th, I'll, I'll do a Joy Division celebration mm. uh, with an exhibition, because we did an exhibition in memorabilia as well, as the gig. And um, I was a bit worried about playing the music, because you do get a bit worried when you do this about being deemed to be a tribute band. It's like it's one of the worst um, insults in the world, apart from uh, you're doing it for the money. That's the other worst. The worst is for a musician to do it for the money is somehow wrong, whereas everybody else works and gets money. <laughs> yeah. And that's all right. That do, yeah, it's a weird one. That I need to analyse that one. You've mentioned before that you're tone deaf. Yeah. Is it important to still do these shows for the fans as well as, you know, celebrating Ian Curtis's life? I was tone deaf when I started. <laughs> it hasn't, I haven't gone deaf. Right. No, it, tone deaf means that you can't discern notes. Yeah. So, like, if you said to me, tune your guitar, mm. I can't tune it okay. because I can't discern the notes. The it's different to uh, deafness. Uh, I am deaf in one ear anyway, but that's just through the band. So it's not. It's not like it's not something that gets progressively worse. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. I wasn't doing it for the fans, to be honest. I was doing it for Ian. Yeah. When it started. It was all about celebrating that one night because we never did it as New Order. And also, I was really looking forward to playing the songs. It was Bobby Gillespie that gave me the idea to do the LP because he was doing Scream of Delica. Yeah. And I thought, ah, oh, fuck, it gets you out of tribute band territory. By doing the LP, which is more difficult for the listener and more difficult for the player, it gets you out of that just going on and playing your greatest hits and then everyone going, no, they're just a fucking tribute band. You know, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird sort of position to be in. So that that was the reason why. And once we played it, we got inundated with requests to play it. And I went off all around the world, never did England, 
because I thought the English didn't want it because they're just fucking full of keyboard criticism. And it was only when we got these new managers, because these guys manage Echo and the Bunnymen, and they said to me, first thing they said to me was, why have you never played in England? And I went, I don't like the English, they don't like me, so I don't like them. It was like that, you know, I don't like them, they don't like me. <laughs> Uh, and they said, that's stupid, you should play because they think people would really like it. So this is it. This is the first time we've played in England and we've been going for two and a half years. And I suppose it is a bit weird. I mean, I premiered the other LPs at Factory yeah. on May the 18th because we do it with uh, two, chari two charities every time we do it. And we have actually played every single Joy Division song, yeah. which is fantastic, I think. Um, Rowetta from the Happy Mondays obviously sings on Atmosphere, New Dawn Fades and Insight on the EP which was released in 2011 now. You've obviously known her for a long time but how did that come about? Uh, Rowetta was the only vocalist when I was going to play bass that offered to help. Because yeah. the other two vocalists shit themselves because of the keyboard criticism and they wouldn't do it. So Rowetta was the only one that would do it but what Rowetta, I said to Rowetta, you sing them all love. And she went, no, yeah. some of them are too manly. And I was going, no, 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 you'll be fine, you'll be fine. But she didn't, and that's why she said to me, you all have to sing, because these are, I can't sing these. So the only ones that she sang were the ones that she thought she sounded good on. And the only reason I did the EP was because Stephen Morris, who was our drummer, took the piss out of her yeah. and compared her to Susan Boyle, which I thought was terribly unfair. <laughs> because Rowetta is a really good singer and she's a really nice girl and she didn't deserve that. He just let his personal little battle with me uh, fall into Rowetta, so I thought, fuck him, I'll show him, and that's why I did the EP, because Rowetta doesn't sing with us. <laughs> so it further confusion in that um, she's on the EP, but we, she doesn't sing with us, you know, most of the time. She only does it on like, special occasions now, especially now that she's yeah. gone back to the Happy Mondays. When you ordered <coughs> Reformed Without You, how did it make you feel? Uh, did it spur you on really to crack on with this project? <laughs> Would you ever join up back with them? Uh, I felt absolutely betrayed, to be honest, because they didn't just do it. I mean, it, it goes a little bit deeper than just being in the band. We yeah. fell out in 2006, yeah, and we'd finished, and we split up, right? And what happened was, was that they decided to reform without you, but you have a business that, that you run properly, yeah which is a big business, turns over a lot of money. So you're still involved in that business. What they did was, was they did a hotel takeover on that business and fucking decided to pay me. And I, I disagree with that, and that's what we're fighting about. So there's no chance of us getting back together again while we're still fighting. Yeah. So once we stop fighting and it's settled and everybody's happy, at the moment, them three are happy, I yeah. presume, although it doesn't sound like it when you look at them in interviews, yeah. and when you read them in interviews, they don't sound particularly happy. So once all four of us are happy, as my lawyer says, or our lawyer says, then you, you may consider. And, uh, and finally, you've done so many projects over the years, including Joy Division, New don't Order, fucking too many. Revenge, no, Monaco, so uh, well. Freebase, and you've obviously produced Stone Roses and In Spiral Carpet Records as well. If you could uh, possibly pick one piece of work throughout your career um, that's either your favourite or, you, or what you think's your best piece of work, what would it be? I don't know, you see, because it's all so different, like the books uh, you are quite an achievement because of the work involved and the, the gravity of being an author actually is a little bit more than being a musician. It's quite yeah. odd, that one. But I, I, like the, I like doing the Hacienda as well. I do the Hacienda all the time, do the Hacienda nights, do the clothing, the shoes and all that lot. It's actually quite nice. I mean, everybody always says to me, you do too much. Yeah. You do everyone's headings, because you're always fucking there doing something else, doing something else. But I, I honestly don't do anything that I don't enjoy. And everything that you're involved in is really lucky, because in the 35 years since I saw Johnny Rotten that night, that I've been a musician, I've more or less enjoyed every single thing that I've done. And there's not many people in this world that can say that. You know, I mean, I've, I'm very, very lucky to still be, be able to play 35 years later. Fuck it, I thought we wouldn't last 35 minutes. Never mind 35 fucking years, I'm amazed. And the fact that you can still do the achievements, because, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's like I'm such a great fan mm. of all my work. I'm a great fan of Joy Division, massive fucking fan of Joy Division. I'm an expert on Joy Division. Uh, and I'm a really great fan of New Order. Not 
the current new order of being a bunch of twats <laughs> because they act like twats but you know I, so it is it's very difficult to sort of even think because it's all as good you need to start bullying I'm not back it in um, it's all as good yeah as, as each other uh, and yeah, I think my biggest achievement uh, out of everything would, would be me kids yeah you know without a shadow of a doubt because sure. yeah I mean, I mean I, you know, the kids are like, it's fantastic to have Jack in the band, it's great. Um, although he drives him mad, he drives me mad, because you would be if you were with your yeah. dad, you know what I mean? You'd be at each other's throats all the time, but it's actually really nice, because he's a huge fan of the music as well. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it is a weird one. I mean, you know, the, 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 the people are the people that you miss, like Tony Wilson, mm. Rob Gretton, Ian, you know, they're Martin, aren't they? There, the saddest part of it is, is that you lost those people, because especially with Ian, because you've had such a great time doing it, and you've benefited so much, you know, financially, creatively, artistically from everything that you've done. And Ian, God bless him, he, he never had that. Yeah. You know, he's just sort of fro frozen in time at yeah. 23, the poor bugger. Yeah. So that's a bit of a that that's a weird one about doing this. You know, you're watching the crowds and you're thinking, fucking hell, if Ian was doing this. You'd be doing the fucking arena. Joy Division would be bigger than the Stone Roses because they had to say they were better than the Stone Roses. You know what I mean? So it's a really odd position and an odd feeling, and it's that frustration that you don't get. Those people aren't there, you know, to to enjoy it really. Because Tony was like so instrumental in doing it all. As was Rob Gretton, as was Ian. Martin and him, fucking hell, you know what I mean? Here I am translating Martin Hannett's record, deeming his production just as valuable as the band's music, you know, for people to listen to, and they're really responding to it really well. Yeah. So, no, I'm actually quite happy with the other <laughs> things that I've done. All right, well, uh, Peter, it's been an absolute honour. Thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. Thank you. Thank you.